Hello and welcome to The Arise interview where we take time to reflect on the big stories from the news and on the fortunes and affairs of the world in an hour of conversation with commentators, analysts and thought leaders. I'm Charles Anyekolu. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, the latest Transparency International Corruption Ranking is out and Nigeria has dropped three places, scoring lower than its record in the previous year. The country is now in 149th place out of 180 countries and the lower ranking is an indication that corruption is perceived to have worsened in Nigeria within the last one year. But is the TI index, which measures the perception of corruption and not corruption itself, an accurate way of assessing the prevalence of fraud or graft in a country? We'll speak with the head of Transparency International in Nigeria. And later, the 21st century turned 21 this month. And as January comes to an end in a few days' time and the year 2021 begins in earnest, we'll assess the future in the coming year, but with a note of caution and advice not to disregard the century's history in general and the past year 2020 in particular. So, what's your big hope for 2021? And is anything that's better than 2020 good enough for you? We have analysis coming up. Now, you may know that Transparency International is a global movement working in more than 100 countries to end the injustice of corruption and it attempts to hold public servants and the powerful to account for the common good. Corruption, of course, is an issue that has a hugely negative impact on people's lives and Transparency, through its advocacy, campaigning and research, works to expose the systems and networks that allow corruption to thrive. Now one of those ways that it does it is through its Corruption Perception Index which offers an annual snapshot of the degree of global corruption by ranking countries and territories from around the world and allowing for a comparison of scores from one year to the next. In the latest index, Nigeria, long regarded as one of Africa's most corrupt countries, has once again ranked low on the index. Not surprising, given that Nigerians themselves commonly regard their governments as corrupt. But is Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index misleading and damaging, given that it measures not corruption itself, but the perception of corruption? Or is it informative and useful? There are various extent of below mentioned factors of the unfavorable ranking this year. We feel that these areas require immediate improvement for the sake of the well being of ordinary Nigerians. Witness one absence of transparency in the COVID 19 pandemic response. With the COVID 19 pandemic out of Nigeria's responsibility, there has been a lack of transparency in the emergency response of the government. Coupled with the gap in coordination, the process has been fraught by incessant flaunting of procurement guidelines, ordering of relief materials and diversion of these materials, which are then used as personal souvenirs, presented to the political party loyalists and close associates. The year 2020 witnessed the NSAS practice. We saw young people across the nation demanding an end to police brutality and corruption. A factor that led to this practice was widespread bribery and extortion by law enforcement officials, especially the police. The first and second national corruption survey conducted by United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, UNODC, in partnership with the government's National Bureau of Statistics, NBC, and released in 2017, and 2019 both show that Nigerian police is the institution with the highest prevalence of bribery among the institution measured. While there has been commendable effort by the Nigerian police 
Complaint Response Unit, CRU, in reducing police abuses, there is need to scale up the effort of the unit to meet the demand of citizens as contained in the Police Act 2020. Well, for more on the latest Transparency International Corruption Perception Index and what it says about Nigeria, I'm joined now from Abuja by the head of Transparency International Nigeria, Awal Musa Rafsanjani. Good to see you, Awal, and a Happy New Year. I don't think I've spoken to you this year, so jolly good to have you um, on the program. Um, first of all, just tell us more about how this transparency international index actually works thank you very much um, and um, as usual every year we try to explain to nigerians how um, the corruption perception index works and the methodology that is um, uh, adapted you know to carry out this um, ranking uh, first and foremost you know uh, I want to say that whether Transparency International, you know, um, give out this report or not, Nigerians are overwhelmingly in belief that the country is shrinking in corruption. So there's no any dispute. What TI is doing, what TI Sislag is doing, is actually uh, giving the perception that Nigerian people are actually, you know. Um, seeing how the country is corrupt so business people uh scholars experts in the corruption they carry out this survey and there are eight reputable credible respected global institutions that carry out this survey every year and in this year uh nigeria was one of the country out of 183 countries that have been actually uh, surveyed and based on the um, parameters nigeria is rank you know uh, in the current ranking that we have seen uh, which is really sad because nigeria ranking and scoring both have all dropped uh, compared to last year and the explanation to this is simple one government is not really seriously committed to the fight against corruption and it is just a slogan or campaign slogan uh, then definitely you don't expect serious fight against corruption for example the fight against corruption has not reached 36 states of the federation it has not reached the seven over 770 local government that we have in the country the fight against corruption did not also get into legislature or the executive itself and judiciary. You cannot fight corruption by slogan, by dismissing and abusing or harassing people. No, the fight against corruption must be done in a manner that you know your legal framework, your compliance on the legal framework, you know your uh, sanction is serving as deterrent. In the case of Nigeria, you have so many laws that are being disregarded. For example, the freedom of information law is not being respected. Uh, we have public procurement law that till today, Nigerian government is still carrying on with procurement scandal. Uh, just recently, the Abacha loot money that was that we all campaigned to get it back, consultant was supposed to be hired and the government plotted the public procurement procedure and awarded it to you know uh, another group that did not meet the criteria or did not come you know in the ranking that you know uh, even the government itself marked so coupled with the testimony that we have seen in the national assembly by so many government agencies that confessing to have stolen or to have diverted public funds especially during the COVID, you know the relief palliative you have seen that corruption has also reached the level that it has compromised our security sector uh, the police the you know uh, generally the security sector are all embedded in this and that is why insecurity in the country is poor because corruption pulls in insecurity 
corruption has now reached even our foreign studies. For example, promotion and the appointment, in, even in the foreign affairs, you know, also is becoming compromised. A lot of allegations by many staff of the foreign affairs to the National Assembly shows that there are a lot of corruption even, you know, in that regard. To get Nigerian passport, whether in Nigeria or abroad, is full of corruption. For you to be employed in Nigeria, it is full of corruption. So you cannot get legitimate I mean, employment, you cannot be promoted, you cannot get your entitlement until you pay bribe. Right. If you um, get from to and be Johnny, I, I apologize for interrupting you, um, and, and thank you for setting that out as comprehensively as you have. Um, but I, I have to say that uh, the things that you're mentioning are things that have been prevalent in this country for many, many years. I mean, there, there hasn't been a, a dramatic departure from what has always prevailed. What I'm curious about is given the fact that these things have been in this country for as long as most people can remember, I mean, you're not mentioning anything particularly new, um, when the Transparency Corruption Index says Nigeria has dropped several points how is that measured and how did transparency arrive at that drop i'm curious okay <clears throat> like i mentioned earlier on um transparency international does not sit down to confile i mean to carry out this survey we rely on the eight you know um well globally respected institutions that you know carry out this survey and one of it is even the Ibrahim Mo Foundation, you know, uh, that also carry out this. And, you know, what TI does is just to rank this based on the perception and based on the testimony that many people, both in Nigeria and the international community that come to... Well, I, I understand and that, Rafsanjani, and I apologize for interrupting you again, but... I understand what I'm saying is that that perception has not changed for as long as most people can remember. In other words, the perception has remained, uh, you know, the perception has been that Nigeria is a spectacularly corrupt country. That's the perception that most Nigerians have. What I'm asking you is why has that perception worsened? in the last few years. And we've got a bit of a minute before we take a break, but we will come back to you. Okay. The truth is that Nigerian government refuses to do the right thing. If Nigerian government takes all the advice, all the suggestions that civil society organization, Transparency International, CISLAC, Budget, CDD, and many number of civil society organization in Nigeria, if they are taking those suggestion to improve on our legal framework, compliance, implementation, I can tell you that we would be able to you know, uh, reduce the cost of corruption. Secondly, the impunity at which government does its work, you know, if it is reduced, you, the rating will change. Thirdly, again, like I said, if the fight against corruption is not just a slogan and propaganda or campaign, you would have been able to seriously fight corruption. As it is now, how much of public education is government investing? In uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, Al Wal, but we'll come back to you in a moment. We've got to take a break, I'm afraid. Uh, you're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about the latest Transparency International corruption ranking and what it says about Nigeria. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, the, as you might have heard, the latest Transparency International Corruption ranking is eight, and Nigeria has dropped three places, scoring lower than its record in the previous year. The country is now in 149th place out of 180 countries, and the lower ranking is an indication that corruption is perceived to have worsened in Nigeria within the last one year. The index shows that Nigeria scored 25 out of 100, one point less than its 26 points in the previous year. The assessment is on a scale of 0 to 100, where 0 is highly corrupt and 100 is very clean. 
The index assessed 180 countries on the basis of perceived corruption in the public sector. And with me from Abuja, the head of Transparency International Nigeria, Awal Musa Rafsanjani. Awal, thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And uh, apologies for uh, breaking, interrupting you earlier. We obviously had to take a break. But before we did go on that break, um, you were talking about the index as being based on a perception of corruption rather than corruption itself. My question is, isn't it rather a bit problematic to expect perceptions to be reliable? Well, um, for Nigeria and Nigerians, um, they then need actually Transparency International to know that there's a pervasive of corruption in Nigeria. As even the government itself, through the National Bureau of Statistics, have conducted survey on corruption, and it shows that corruption is still uh, fundamental in Nigeria. ICPC had also carried out survey, and it shows that there is a huge corruption in Nigeria. So even government institution itself, it has actually conducted, you know, um, survey of corruption. How Nigeria they perceive government, you know, institutions. The latest one that was done by uh, UN, UN ODC in collaboration with the, you know, uh, 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 NBC, you know, it shows that clearly even police is the most corrupt, you know, um, government institutions as the way Nigerians, they feel. So what Transparency International is doing, <coughs> excuse me, is just to uh, measure, you know, this perception based on public institution. We are not actually uh, ranking Nigeria on the basis of the entire um, you know, uh, population. No, just public institutions. How Nigerians come across you know, corruption in education, in healthcare system, in you know, even the way appointment you know, and promotion and uh, uh, confirmations are done in the country. So this, you do not even need TI actually to tell you that there's that problem. So instead of really emphasizing more about what TI is saying, let's even emphasize on what Nigerians are actually, and even government itself is even saying. As a result of the corruption, even the government itself on, you know, in the area of procure, I mean, um, in the area of uh, access recovery, they themselves too, they have acknowledged that something fishy is going on, and that led to the suspension of even the acting um, uh, 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 EFCC chair, which the result, the problem has still not been resolved. So this is to tell you that even the government itself acknowledges the fact that corruption is pervasive and the only problem that we have is that the government inability to put measures to deal with this corruption you know at various level whether at government local government level or at state level or at federal level or even at you know uh, judiciary or legislature or executive level you cannot be fighting corruption through slogans and attacking and blackmailing people who say that you should fix the problem if Nigerian government want to improve on this rating, we must do the right things. We need to have the legal framework where we don't have. We need to implement where we have the, the policy and the legislative framework. We need to ensure sanction. We need to also ensure that there's a proper education for Nigerians because the absence of people you know, denying the implication you know, and consequences of corruption continue to encourage this kind of um, uh, 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 practices. So. It is a very simple thing. The perception will change when we do the right thing. Some other countries, including Europe, America, Asia, they sit down with organizations like you know, uh, TI to say, how do we address this problem? We notice that this problem is there. How can we help to do that? And TI is willing to support you know, government across the world, and it has been doing that, and many governments in the world have been working with TI to ensure that that is done. But in Nigeria, what is the case? In Nigeria, one government spokesperson will come and dismiss what Nigerians are going through because he is protected, you know, and beneficiary of also the corrupt system that is running. Otherwise, ordinary Nigerian who cannot survive the insecurity, the poverty, the unemployment, you know, the lack of com comfort, the lack of access to opportunities, will tell you, yes, he is not only perceiving corruption, he's actually going and facing the corruption on daily basis. So government, 
need to stop the propaganda, need to stop the blackmail, need to work toward addressing the challenges that we have. Which right, okay, we uh, that, I understand I that, you, uh, we can Rex reduce and the poverty. And, and I apologize for interrupting you again, but obviously this is a dialogue. Um, I, I take on board, I mean, I don't think there's anybody that will deny the points you're making, which is that the perception in Nigeria and in fact outside Nigeria as well is that this is a very corrupt country and in fact in support of what you're saying the index could be could actually help to create incentives for countries to improve their anti-corruption fight so that point that you're making is taken on board but what I am trying to establish is whether you agree because i mean it's not just one way it's both ways whether you agree that there are limitations of the index not least that it could be incorrectly understood and be used in a way that's quite simply wrong in other words the way the index is applied by the public may not necessarily be progressive well charles the bottom line here is that Nigerians are suffering from corruption. As a result of corruption, there's uh, poverty. As a result of corruption, there's insecurity. Because one resources that are meant to address issues of poverty, issues of job creation, issues of infrastructure are stolen by a wicked public official. You do not need to get any academic exercise for that. Nigerians already are facing this you know, um, crisis of corruption. So what we should be focusing on, this obvious reality in Nigeria, how do we overcome it? And I think that should be the primary focus for government because Nigerian government knows that there's a lacuna in our legal framework. We don't have whistleblowing legislation. We don't have you know, um, access recovery legal framework. We don't have so many number of legislation that is needed in order to deal with corruption. We, even the one that we have, like the public procurement, the government refuse, uh, is refusing to even inaugurate the Council of Public Procurement and is refusing to comply with the Public Procurement 207. You know. Again, if you look at the freedom of information disregard that the public officials are doing, it's enough to tell you that something is wrong and you do not need academic exercise to be able to say that, okay, we can fix it. So what I am appealing and trying to you know, send the message across is that in Nigeria we have reality that is consuming us of poverty, I mean of corruption, which is deepening the poverty, deepening the insecurity, deepening the ethnic and religious tension in the country because people you know, are doing things that are not, you know, acceptable in any civilized, in any constitutional democracy. And we cannot be an isolation on how best practice a country should be. If we want to overcome this, we must come and sit down and see how, where we have lacuna, where we have gaps, we address it. Thank God we have advocated for the for having national strategy on the fight against corruption. Let government operationalize that. Let that document leave Abuja because we have 36 states. We have, you know, uh, 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 over 777 local government in the country. Why is it that we cannot work toward encouraging even the state government to replicate the anti-corruption, you know, and public commission, uh, complaint commission? The only state that has that is Kanu, and it's not enough. We need to, the federal government need to incentivize uh, other states to replicate the setting up of the anti-corruption and public complaint commission. So okay, that, that I, I think, I think um, we, we certainly agree with you that there needs to be mechanisms within Nigeria for checking corruption. And um, we, we also take on board the points that you've made. Uh, Awal Musa Rafsanjani, Head of Transparency International, thank you very much indeed. And you're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, including we assess the future in the coming year, but with a note of caution and advice not to disregard the past year 2020s.